Hello again and welcome to this video on comparators, relaxation oscillators and hysteresis. The context of, of the video is that I was asked to evaluate various circuits to blink an LED in terms of price, size and most importantly power consumption. One of these circuits is a particularly neat one. It's certainly not a novel one, but I still think it's quite a cool one. So in the remainder of the video, I will briefly introduce comparators, because this circuit is, uh, is based on a comparator. Uh, then I will discuss the circuit itself, show some details on the scope, and finally discuss the timing calculations for this circuit. Just in case you don't know this already, a comparator is a component that has two inputs and one output. You usually use this symbol here. This symbol looks like an operational amplifier, therefore uh, I usually put a C in there just to denote that this is a comparator and not a regular op-amp. You provide a uh, supply voltage and the comparator keeps monitoring both inputs and outputs a logic high if and only if the non-inverting input has higher voltage than the inverting input. This means that uh, if you apply 3 volts to the non-inverting input and 2 volts to the inverting input, the comparator will, uh, will output a logic high. If, on the other hand, you have lower voltage on the non-inverting input compared to the inverting input, the comparator outputs a logic low. That would be if you have 2 volts on the non-inverting input and 3 volts on the inverting input, you'd get 0 volts at the output. You can get comparators both uh, either with a push-pull or with an open drain configuration. If you don't know the difference between these two, I made a video uh, about that. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Uh, I'm going to use a push-pull uh, comparator, but if you have an open drain comparator, you typically put this pull-up resistor here um, to pull up the logic uh, high to your supply voltage. This is the first draft of the oscillator circuit. This circuit doesn't yet work as intended, yet I'm going to use it to explain some basic concepts. Also, the circuits I'm going to show are not the low power circuits that I want in the end, but um, I will massively increase the resistor values and use a low power comparator to meet the power requirements. This circuit is powered by 5 volts. So we have 5 volts here, and also we're powering the comparator with 5 volts. There is a voltage divider consisting of two 1K resistors generating a bias voltage of 2.5 volts that is fed into the non-inverting input of the comparator. Hence, there is always 2.5 volts at the non-inverting input. The circuit operates in two stages. The first stage is when the capacitor is being charged. The second stage is when the capacitor is being discharged. And then it starts all over with the first stage. So let's discuss the first stage first and assume that this capacitor is initially discharged. This capacitor being discharged means that we have zero volts across the capacitor and therefore also zero volts at the inverting input of the comparator. As I said before, we're feeding 2.5 volts into the non-inverting input and hence the comparator outputs a logic high that is in this case 5 volts. If we have 5 volts here, the LED is on, but we're also charging the capacitor through this 1K feedback resistor. During the second stage, the capacitor is being discharged. So let's assume that this capacitor is charged to 5 volts which means that we have 5 volts applied to the inverting input of the comparator. Because 5 volts is larger than the 2.5 volts we're applying to the non-inverting input, the comparator outputs a logic low, that is, the output sits at 0 volts. The LED is off, but this also means that the output of the comparator actually can sink current, because essentially the output is shorted to ground. Because this is then some sort of ground here, the capacitor can be discharged through this 1K resistor. So the capacitor is being discharged. So far, everything sounds great. At first, the capacitor is empty, it's being charged, uh, 
then the second stage is engaged and the capacitor is being discharged and then the first stage is engaged and capacitor is being charged again. So the LED should blink, right? Uh, in practice the LED does not blink and, and the reason for that is actually pretty simple. Let's start with the assumption as before that the capacitor is initially discharged. The voltage indicated here on the y-axis is zero at first and as the capacitor is being charged the voltage starts to increase. At some point however the voltage will hit uh, 2.5 volts and as soon as the capacitor voltage uh, exceeds 2.5 volts the second stage is engaged. So then the capacitor is discharged. But if the capacitor is discharged just a little bit such that the voltage is slightly below 2.5 volts the first stage is engaged again. So um, instead of having a nicely blinking LED uh, the, the comparator output switches erratically because the capacitor voltage is just slightly jumping around 2.5 volts. So in a way things started out nicely but then we hit this problem and the question now is um, can we address this and if so how? Now if you think about it it would be nice if we were somehow able to change the 2.5 volts bias voltage depending on the current state of the system. And we can do that by adding uh, this additional resistor between the output of the comparator and the non-inverting input. Otherwise the circuit is exactly the same as, as the one we saw previously. The only difference really is that I added in uh, this additional resistor. What does this resistor do? Remember that the output of the comparator, depending on the stage of the system, either is a 5 volt, some sort of 5 volt supply, or is 0 volts that is, is grounded. So let's look at what is going on when the output sits at 5 volts first. If the output is at 5 volts, this resistor is going to parallel up with this resistor over here. I redrew this. Um, in that sketch here, we have the 5 volt supply, the 1k resistor, that is the upper part of the voltage divider, the other 1k resistor, that is the lower part of the voltage divider, and in parallel to this uh, voltage divider, there is a, an additional 1k resistor between this 5 volt node here and the non inverting input of the comparator because these two resistors are paralleling up to a 500 ohms resistor. If we apply the voltage divider formula, we see that we have a, a voltage at the center point of the divider of two thirds of five volts. Similarly, if the output is grounded, the 1K resistor is paralleling up with the lower part of the voltage divider. And we have this situation over here. We have 1K, that is the upper part of the voltage divider, and the lower part of the voltage divider consists of this 1K resistor here, which is that one, and in parallel there is the new resistor that I introduced in this schematic, which is over here. Then the lower part of the divider is 500 ohms, and the voltage at the center point is one-third of 5 volts. So if you calculate this out, you end up with uh, something like 3.3 volts in this case and 1.67 volts in that case. And the consequence of adding this resistor is that when you're charging the capacitor, that is when the output of the comparator is 5 volts and you're in this situation here, you actually have to reach not 2.5 volts, but 3.33 volts. To trigger the second stage. But as soon as you trigger the second stage, the, 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 this bias voltage is not 2.5 volts, also not 3.33 volts, but it's actually 1.67 volts. So you sort of have to go above the 2.5 volts bias of the voltage divider to trigger the discharging state and then to reach below 1.67 volts um, to go back to the start is to the to the charging state. I built up the circuit on a breadboard 
and I'm not showing the breadboard because it's a horrible mess, but I actually have an LED on that breadboard that is uh, blinking, uh, actually according to the green trace um, in the lower part of the scope screen. This green trace is set to 5 volts per division and I'm measuring the output of the comparator. That's where the LED and, and the current limiting resistor of the LED is connected to. And as you can see, this is toggling between 0 volts and 5 volts as it should be. Perhaps more of interest is the upper part of the scope screen. The blue trace is the inverting input of the comparator. So essentially the blue trace is the voltage drop across the resistor. And you can see that the resistor is being charged and then discharged, charged and discharged and superimposed to the blue trace there is this pink trace which is the non-inverting input of the comparator. This is the point where this bias point is jumping around depending on the state in which the system is. I put in some measurements. The lower uh, and the lower threshold of the comparator due to hysteresis is at 1.68 volts and the upper threshold is at 3.23 volts. You can see these two figures over here. So um, this is not exactly reflecting the calculations that we did before. 1.6768 volts is fine, but there is a 100 millivolts offset to the upper threshold. It's 3.23 volts, but it really should be 3.33 volts. And most likely this is because I'm using mismatched resistors in the circuit. These are like 5% tolerance, pretty crappy resistors that I found in some bin. Um, so I'd expect some mismatch and hence um, the voltage is not going to be exactly what it should be um, just due to the tolerances of the parts. Also, we will go through the, th uh, the theory of the timing calculations um, in, in the next shot actually. But if you note, um, the, the pulse width of the low pulse here is 673 milliseconds and the width of the high pulse is 719 milliseconds. And if you go through the calculations, you, you, you see that in theory these should be exactly the same, but they're not. However, uh, remember these figures, that's uh, 670 milliseconds and 720 milliseconds roughly. And we'll see whether that matches with the calculations or not. If you, if you look at the blue and the pink trace um, together, uh, you'll see that as soon, so the capacitor is being charged, 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 and as soon as it hits this threshold voltage, um, the second stage is being triggered. That is, the threshold voltage on the non-inverting input pin um, is being reduced, and as a consequence of that, the second change, uh, the second state is, is, um, is triggered in which the capacitor is being discharged. And then it starts all over again. The last thing I would like to discuss is some calculations on the timing of this oscillator circuit. You probably know that if you have a capacitor that is charged to some initial voltage V0, it's going to take one RC time constant for this capacitor to discharge through a resistor to 37% of the initial voltage. Let's make an example to make that a little bit clearer. Let's say you have a capacitor of 1 millifarad that is charged to 10 volts. And you then take this capacitor and discharge it through a 1k resistor. The RC time constant is 1 kilo ohms multiplied by 1 millifarad, that's actually exactly 1 second. This means that it takes 1 second for the 10 volts across the capacitor to drop down to 3.7 volts. And 3.7 volts is, is because that's just 37% of 10 volts. This is some sort of rule of thumb, it's a back of the envelope calculation. People usually also say that within five times the RC time constant, you can consider a capacitor to be fully discharged. But there is actually a, a formula for this. And you can derive this formula just in case um, you're curious uh, by setting up 
the different differential equation system um, for the equivalent circuit and and that's just the solution of the differential equation and there is also a similar formula for the case in which you're charging a capacitor but it turns out that the calculations are exactly the same in either cases so i'm just showing the calculations for this case what this formula tells you is the voltage at some time t depending on the initial voltage, the time that has elapsed, and the RC time constant. So let's say we have a capacitor uh, of 680 microfarads, as we have in our example, that we're discharging through a resistor of 1K. This capacitor is initially charged to two-thirds of five volts, because that's the voltage the capacitor is charged to when the discharging stage starts. And we would like to know how much time has to elapse until the voltage drops down to one third of five volts, which is the voltage at which the, the charging stage is going to be reinitiated. If we take this equation here and solve for T, we end up with um, a T of, 700, uh, of 471 milliseconds. But wait a second, um, during the experiment on the scope, we measured a pulse width of something like 600 or 700 milliseconds. Um, so that was much longer than the 471 milliseconds we just calculated. And I wouldn't be too concerned if this was off by a few dozens of milliseconds, but um, the discrepancy we see here is actually much larger than that. And uh, one might wonder where this comes from. The reason for this is actually, even though the capacitor I have on my breadboard has a 680 microfarad label on it, if you measure it, um, it's much, much larger than that. It's, it's around 900 or even more microfarads. In fact, I have no idea where this capacitor comes from. It, it was just the first capacitor it, I found in, in one of my boxes. Um, so uh, for, for electrolytic capacitors, generally you have to assume tolerances of 20% or thereabouts, unless you, you have some sort of special capacitor designed in. The take home message here is, uh, if you have a circuit and you have to meet tight requirements, let's say you, you had to meet this 471 millisecond figures up to a few milliseconds. You have to really make sure that all of your parts that are critical to your circuit meeting the requirements have tolerance values that allow you to meet these requirements. Um, and if you, if you make some back on the envelope calculations, you'll see that um, this RC, actually any kind of RC oscillator is not the greatest to meet these tight requirements because of the tolerances involved in, uh, in particularly the capacitors. So uh, I hope that was interesting and in case you have anything to share please do so in the comments. Thank you for watching.